Hey there, fellow investors. Iggy here from The Investing Iguana. Today, we're tackling a hot topic. Fed's interest rate game, what you need to know. Ever feel like the Fed is playing chess while we're stuck in a game of checkers? Well, not anymore. I'm here to level the playing field. We'll break down how the Fed's moves impact your wallet and investments. Think of this video as your personal Fed decoder ring. By the end, you'll understand why interest rates matter to you, even if you're not a finance whiz. Ready to turn those confusing Fed announcements into your secret weapon for smarter investing? Let's dive in! The Federal Reserve's approach to managing inflation and economic growth is like walking a tightrope. They're currently maintaining a cautious stance, keeping interest rates steady at 5.25% to 5.5% since July 2023. Why? Because they're trying to strike a delicate balance between taming inflation and not stifling economic growth. Here's the thing about that famous 2% inflation target everyone talks about. It's not as scientifically derived as you might think. In fact, the Fed only officially adopted this target in 2012, which is pretty recent in the grand scheme of things. Surprisingly, they borrowed this idea from New Zealand, who kind of stumbled upon it in the late 1980s. The origin story of the 2% target is quite interesting. It wasn't born from complex economic models or extensive research. Instead, it came from an off-the-cuff remark during a TV interview in New Zealand. The country was battling high inflation at the time, and when asked about a suitable target, a central banker casually suggested 0 to 1%. This number was then adjusted to 2% to give a bit more wiggle room. Now you might wonder, why not 0% inflation? Wouldn't stable prices be ideal? Well, it's not that simple. A little inflation can actually be good for the economy. It encourages spending and investment, as people know their money will be worth slightly less in the future. It also gives central banks more room to maneuver during economic downturns. The Fed's current stance is that they won't reduce interest rates until they're more confident that inflation is sustainably moving towards that 2% target. They're worried that easing up too soon could undo the progress they've made in curbing inflation. On the flip side, they're also aware that being too strict could unnecessarily harm economic activity and employment. It's worth noting that some economists argue for a higher inflation target, like 3% or 4%. Others suggest abandoning a specific target altogether and just aiming for general price stability. But changing course now, in the middle of an inflation battle, could shake public confidence and expectations, which are crucial for managing inflation. In the end, monetary policy is as much art as it is science. The Fed is constantly assessing incoming data, future outlooks, and potential risks to make the best decisions for the economy. It's a complex balancing act, and that 2% target, arbitrary as it may seem, serves as an important anchor for economic expectations and decision-making. But here's the thing, the world is changing fast. We're seeing signs that inflation might be structurally higher in the future. It's like trying to fit into your old jeans after the holidays. Sometimes you need to adjust your expectations. One big reason for this is something called reshoring, Imagine you used to buy all your clothes from a cheap store across town, but now you're making them yourself at home. It might be more reliable, but it's also more expensive. That's what's happening with global supply chains. Another factor is the U.S. budget deficit. Picture Uncle Sam with a giant credit card bill that keeps growing. To pay it off, he needs to borrow more money, which means issuing more treasury bonds. This flood of new bonds keeps interest rates high, even if the Fed wants to lower them. So what does all this mean for the stock market? Well, despite the Fed's reluctance to cut rates, stocks are still partying like it's 1999. Part of this is just natural optimism. Investors are like golden retrievers, always excited about the future. But there are also some solid reasons for this positivity. The U.S. economy is showing some serious resilience. Retail sales are strong and the job market is healthier than a yoga instructor on a juice cleanse. This all points to a soft landing, a scenario where we avoid a recession despite high interest rates. Now let's talk about what this means for your investments. In a world of higher for longer interest rates, here are some areas to consider. One, 
big tech companies with lots of cash. These firms are like squirrels who stocked up on acorns before winter. They borrowed money when rates were low, so they're not hurting from high interest costs now. 2. Energy companies with low debt. Oil and gas demand stays pretty steady, even when rates are high. It's like how people still need coffee no matter how expensive it gets. 3. Large banks with diverse loan portfolios. Higher rates can actually be good for banks as long as they're not too exposed to risky areas like commercial real estate. Remember, investing is all about balance. Don't put all your eggs in one basket and always consider your personal financial goals and risk tolerance. And there you have it, folks. We've cracked the code on the Fed's interest rate game. Let's recap what we learned. 1. The Fed's decisions ripple through the entire economy. 2. Interest rates affect everything from your savings to stock prices. 3. Understanding Fed moves can help you make smarter investment choices. Remember, knowledge is power in the investing world. Use what you've learned to stay ahead of the curve. Did this video help demystify the Fed for you? Hit that like button. Want more investing insights? Smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Got questions or want me to cover a specific topic? Drop a comment below. Your feedback shapes future videos.